Rub up your engines! Well, if you're worried about range anxiety in electric vehicles, look what happened to this guy who owns an electric Rivian R1. The guy's from Phoenix, Arizona, so it's not a place that gets freezing cold, which of course will make batteries worse. He had his vehicle plugged in for an entire week he wasn't using it, and it only charged eight miles of range per day. So you got 56 miles range, having it plugged in the whole week. Talk about waiting for your vehicle to charge up. And it was hooked up to a 240 volt charger at his house on a 48 amp home charger. That's a lot of power. So what happened was excessive drain, which a lot of people are talking about with these things. They sit there and they're draining power just sitting there. Even though he had this stupid thing plugged in, all he got was eight miles of range per day when you subtract how much it drained just sitting there. It's bad enough that people are worried about the range of their electric vehicles, but then the guy plugs in it for a whole week and all he got was eight measly miles a day when you had to subtract the power that was used by the machine just sitting there, draining itself out. Now, let me tell you something. All regular cars that we have, gasoline, diesel cars, have batteries, right? And those batteries do drain somewhat just sitting there. And modern cars drain more than the old ones because they got a lot of computers that are always running and doing stuff, right? But it's nothing like this. They're powered by electricity only. And if you get it drained out, that's the end of your power. You got a regular car, eh, it's a little weak. Maybe you jump it, start it, and then drive it, and the alternator recharges. You don't care. These things only use power as you're driving. So if you don't have much in it, you're not going to be able to go very far, right? And if you have to add on, these things are just sitting there draining the power out, which is the only source of power you have. Obviously, they're not building these things correctly. And these, of course, are new cars. You got a really old regular car, gasoline or diesel, right? We all know as they age, sometimes they do get some parasitic drain that's more than normal. And you say, I can't let it sit for two, three weeks or it won't start because the batteries drain because they're old and things wear. These are electric cars that are brand new for all intents and purposes, you know, less than a year old, a year or two years old, not very old at all. And they're already having problems draining their main source of power electricity. Imagine what's going to happen to these clunkers when they get to be older. Yet another reason not to buy an electric vehicle as they stand today. They're not perfected. They're not even close to perfection. And these are new cars. As they get older, they're going to be even worse. Who knows what's going to happen when they're four or five, six or heaven forbid, 10 years old. They'll probably just say, well, you should buy a new car every four years what the heck? Throw it away, buy another $100,000 car, you know? These Rivians cost a whole bunch of money. <laughs> Oh, you got plenty of money spending on another car, you know? Come on now, people. Learn from these problems people have and say, oh, let them be the guinea pigs. Let them iron out the problems. Maybe we'll have these battery electric cars in the future for everyone. Maybe not, but I don't want to be a guinea pig myself now. Luke Warren says, my accelerator pedal is too touchy. Got 2010 Toyota Tundra, 97,000 miles. The accelerator pedal is so touchy. I had to be careful. It'll spin the tires. I bought a replacement pedal for it. It helped a little bit. But I wish you could make it less responsive. Any ideas? Of course, as we all know, the problem with some modern cars, those accelerator pedals can be a bit too touchy because they're no longer a cable operated system. When they were a cable, the cable had a certain amount of resistance, then they pulled the throttle, which has a spring mechanically. You step on the pedal, the cable would pull and the throttle would move and had a spring and there was a lot of resistance, all right? Modern vehicles, your accelerator pedal is like a computer mouse. It is not physically connected to the throttle. It is a variable resistor system where it sends electricity to the computer. The computer analyzes all the data. It sends electricity to the throttle where an electric motor commanded to open a certain amount, right? So it's all done by computers and electronics. The only thing that you have to control it is the accelerator pedal itself. Now you said put a replacement pedal on it and helped a little bit. Make sure, absolutely sure that the pedal you got is an OEM Toyota one. People might've been messing around, put a wrong one on it. I personally haven't had too many problems with the Tundras at all with their accelerator pedals. You know, they don't seem that weird to me. But then again, I drive all kinds of people's cars and our Matrix has accelerator computer system with an electric motor on the throttle. You know, my Celica doesn't. It's got actual cable and of course they do feel a bit stiffer. You get a little bit more resistance on them. So try the OEM one. But if let's say your previous vehicle 
did have a throttle cable and you're going to one that, that doesn't have a throttle cable on it, that, you're just going to have to get used to driving that experience. Originally, years ago when they started at, in mass in the early 2000s when most cars are switching over to that, a lot of people got, they step on it too fast, they accelerate too fast, but they eventually got used to it. But try the factory one. Car new 2023 says, should I repair or sell my wreck 2009 Sportage? September, I got a 2009 Kia Sportage with 113,000 miles. I ended up hitting some ice in a BS situation, went to a curb, had the passenger wheel hit at 20 miles an hour head on. Everything's broke, axle, knuckle, tie rod, even bent the subframe. It's my first car and I don't know, it's 1500 bucks to repair it and I still owe 2500 on top of that. Should I fix it and get a beater or get it fixed and hope? You're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. If your subframe is actually bent, you really, most guys won't fix them. They'll say it's junk, it's unibody construction, your subframe's bent. They won't even fix the thing. And if it's really bent and they got to cut it off and weld a new one on, it's going to cost a lot more than 1500 to fix it. If you really bent the subframe and stuff, I'd say just get rid of the car, forget it. You're going to have to eat the damage. I'm sure you don't have collision on it. I mean, if you do have collision, the insurance company's paying for it, go right ahead. Get it fixed. I sell it as soon as possible and then get a better car. I get a Toyota or a Honda. You're going to get one that's older with more mileage on it, but they're much better cars. But if you're paying for it out of your pocket with that kind of damage, no one's going to fix it with frame damage and stuff like that for as little as 1500 They won't do a good job. You better to just eat it and find another car. Oh, that would make more sense because a lot of guys, they'll promise, oh yeah, we can fix this for this. And then you find out, oh man, they're full of crap. It's going to cost a lot more. Or they get in and they say, now, oh, we were wrong. It's not going to be 1500 It's going to be 2500 or 3500 We found more damage than we thought. Blah, blah, blah. So a lot of times with that, going that fast, hitting the curb straight on, I probably would say goodbye to the car. Dad, 2LM2 says, I'm working my daughter's car and I want to work work on the front axle and I want an impact wrench, but I do not have an air compressor. The electric ones, the battery power ones are handy, but the corded ones seem to have more power and you never have to worry about the battery going bad. What do you think? Go corded. The corded ones are so much better than they were when I was a young mechanic. They are relatively powerful and understand a lot of it has to do with voltage, right? Even if you get a battery powered one with 36 volts, right? You plug it into the wall, a corded one, it's got 120 volts. It's a lot more potential energy and they do have much more power. I mean, Ingersoll Rand makes a great one if you want to spend some serious money, but Truth be told, you go to Harbor Freight Tools or any of those discount tool places, if you buy their good electric impact wrench, you can get one that works quite good for around 100 bucks, 100, 120 bucks. And they'll work perfectly fine. Now, don't go out and buy the $39 ones. They're crap. And you want to get the axle nut off. So, But if you get those, they're perfectly good. I mean, Ingersoll Rands are best, but they cost a lot more than that. And you might not want to spend that kind of money. If you're only going to be using it every once in a while, I'd say go to Harbor freight tools and buy the best one that they have out there and they work quite well you know eventually they're going to wear out they're not commercial but you're doing it to work on your daughter's car and probably work on your own car and one at that price range is good enough for what you need martin 94 says the missus and i are squabbling over our next car my wife and i have a 2015 dodge challenger xxt it's not paid off we need a bigger car and disagree on what's the best way to trade in a challenger and get into a bigger car or suv all right people like the challengers the zippy cars. How do young guys like them, right? And you want to get a bigger car or an SUV. Numero uno. The best thing is forget the SUV and go for a car because SUVs are overpriced. Everybody wants one. They charge too much money for them. Much better idea to go to a car. And if you want a really nice family car, get a Toyota Camry. Lots of room. They can run forever. You might even know it's a squirrely operation. You might try if you can find one of those Carvanas. The company is on the verge of bankruptcy. At last straw companies will try to make any kind of a deal to make money before there's nothing left, right? So they know they'll be able to sell that Challenger because somebody always wants a fast racy car, right? Going from a fancy racy car to a plain Jane Camry or something like that, you might get a decent deal there because they're on their last legs. They charge too much for their cars, but they used to give too much for their trade-ins. All they care about is selling and they know they can sell Dodge Challenger really fast. People want a racy looking car, right? So you've got that in your hand and you go 
for a more plain Jane car, you might get a decent deal. If it's not Carvana, try all the other ones and see what kind of a deal you can get. Because you don't want to get an SUV because the prices, everybody wants them. The prices are way too high, but sedans aren't as popular as they used to be. And you want a nice four door Camry or four door Accord or something, you might be able to get a good deal that way. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.